Opt out of fear and save your life and time with Bitcoin. It's not too late, but time is running out. Bitcoin, crypto, morning tea. Hey. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name's Piano Matty B. That is Scaramucci. This is your morning tea. A brief glimpse into the crypto markets where the sun shining, where the winds opinion of this piano Zamboni bringing the down. The FOMO index has inched up to 80 from yesterday's 76 Bitcoin dominance is 52.4%. 24 hour volumes, 101 billion. The overall market cap, 2.65. Give or take a hundred million. <laughs> well, the elusive wall. 71.3 She just couldn't hold She tried Kind of But alas Without enough retail support She just couldn't make it After picking out Yesterday at 72.7 The market opened With a whimper And said nah Started to dump at a snail's pace All day long Picking up speed in the wee hours of the night, finding a bottom and a bounce. The 20 moving average, a ciggity 9.6, and has fluttered back up to a time of production. 70.7. Now a couple things here. We are over 70K, which if you told us that two months ago, we would have thought you were delusionally bullish. We are above all three moving averages once again. And we did get a bounce from our channel of eternal monotony support line. Now, of course, I'd like to stay above support to maintain the integrity of this upper channel. But let's not forget that if we zoom out even on this noisy little so-and-so, we can see we are just oscillating back and forth in this huge range. A range that does exist at the top of the market, above last market's all-time high. My heartbreakingly optimistic outlook for today would be to rally back up to retest our channel resistance at 73k. Failing that, we should keep our papers on another bounce and support down at 69.4. Now over on the ding-dong. You can see we've done a textbook retest of our symmetrical triangle of neutrality's resistance line now acting as support and we pass with flying colors and now we've obviously spent more time inside this triangle than out but it wouldn't surprise me to ride the light fandango down this line before our next leg up until we candle close above our channel's resistance level 73k we will be susceptible to the bearish pulls of this triangle support first down at 64k and if she's so darn tootin our channel of eternal monotony support way down at 61k so let's recap <laughs> today's level of interest we need a candle close above 73k to officially be in a bullish uptrend failing that we are still just in this massive range that has supports at 68k 65k 64k and 61k and with the halving in 10 days, yes, 10 days, <laughs> a healthy dose of vitamin P is needed while the market sets up to do what the market does best. Confuse, disappoint, infuriate, but ultimately, for 
reward those with the most patience. We're almost there. You just gotta hold on just a little bit longer, my friends. Would you look at that? The sun's up. It's another beautiful day here on planet Earth. A day none of us are guaranteed yet. We're lucky enough to have anyway. So get out there and knock them dead. And remember, we're playing the same game as our psychopathic elected leads. That's right, it's the long game. So zoom out and have a fantastic day. <laughs> and we'll be going live right away, so grab yourself a coffee. Join me for a quick one, and by all means, sing it with me now. Or on the banks of Boom the Spang, Bitcoin, crypto, morning tea. It is a little bizarre when you think about it. Being in the bear market for as long as we were in and how, how traumatic the bear market was for most of us. It just kept on going down, down, down. Then we, we broke under a, a, a level that we'd never broken under. We broke, the, we, we broke the cycle. And then to have it zip right up, I think it caught us off guard, the speed at which we've hit all-time highs to the point where it's almost spoiled us to a certain degree because I remember most influencers, some of the influencers that I watch, you know, saying, well, if we get to 50 K or 40 K by the having that would set us up for this and that and so and so and whatnot. And all of a sudden we're at all-time highs and it's still slightly, ah, I feel like it's not good enough. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's high. It's higher than we've ever been. We we were we were dreaming of these prices six months ago. Absolutely fantasizing about these prices six months ago. Now that we're here, we're like, hmm, what what else? What do you got now? What do you got now? You're gonna go up. You're gonna go down because I don't really care. I'm a little bored here. Seventy k. Little bored. I would like 73 men and then 75 and upwards to 80. Until then, ah, I'll set my alarm. Let me know when it's 80K. I feel like that's where retail is right now. There's no real OG excitement like for you and I who have been here a long time. We aren't feeling the FOMO and maybe we, we won't feel the FOMO because our bags are packed and we're on the ship and we're when moon, we got our, our coordinates for the moon. So we're, we're, we're comfortable with our position. Maybe in now our bubble, which is the bags packed waiting for the moon trip from the rocket. Maybe there is no real excitement, you know, until absolute crazy bullish delusion into the hundreds of Ks. Maybe that's when when re the real serotonin and dopamine will start hitting us because we are so dead inside <laughs> from the bear market. It's almost as like every time the, the market pumps, it's like, it's like a guy who's had a heart attack and like clear. And then, and then you just see the EKG go. And then it's flat lines again. Okay. Um, 50 K clear. Beep. Flatline. 60, all time high, 69.3, clear. Zzz, boom, beep. <laughs> Flatline. And now that it's, it's in the 70s. So it's, I, every, I know everyone's kind of bummed because it, we, you know, we couldn't hold up 72. We still are in the 70s. Clear. Boom, beep. Flatline. <laughs> so. I don't know what it'll take. For me, I, you know, I've always said I care not for bulls nor bears. This, I, I'm in the middle of my low time horizon, if it will, because because I have Duke. I'm really looking at his cycles, so there's no there's no plan 
imminent plan, knock on wood, for me to get to a level and sell some Bitcoin back to some fiat currency in a bank. You know, there there is there's none of that for me. So I think that creates maybe this apathy for price. You know, it's like, meh, well, it's 100K, great. It's not, it's not going to change my life. There's nothing, there's, there's no dollar bills raining down because it, it goes to 100K. Even it goes to 500K. I'm still, what, what am I going to do? Sell it into to a bank, into some dirty fiat blood money? Now, I get some people will take profits when it's in the millions of dollars, maybe to set themselves up for, uh, you know, the retirement, maybe not to not to work anymore or pay off a house or whatever. But I, I, I'm so deep in the, uh, the great taking that buying a house, I also think that's setting you up for forfeiture as well. <clears throat> I think when they come to take all these securities like mortgages and whatnot, your house, they'll just take it because that's the collateralized debt that they have taken to backstop the derivative. So I saw a video, which is weird because I don't know, to me, this is the biggest thing that's going on in the world right now. The great taking with the DTC. All everyone's securities, all everyone is, nobody owns anything already. The fact that that's going on right now and nobody really knows is mind blowing to me. So I saw this video, I should have linked it in the description. Um, but it was a Senate meeting in Tennessee, and it had David Webb, who wrote uh, The Great Taking, talking in front of the Senate. And I think one of his lawyer buddies, or a lawyer, I don't know if they're buddies, who can be friends with lawyers, you know, you know anyway. Um, and they were te telling the Senate what's going to happen. And you could see the, the old dinosaurs on the bench, right, trying to, so what you're telling me is, is that we don't own anything, nothing, none of our stuff we own. Like, who owns it then? And he went into, well, you know, the Seed & Co., which is under the umbrella of the uh, DTCC, Depository Trust Clearance, they actually have taken it from paper into, and they've digitalized it, material, dematerialized it, they call it, and now they own it. So when they need to... Uh, backstop the derivatives market that's 2.4 quadrillion that is bound to fail they're just going to use that as the collateral to reinstate the new economy so what you're telling me is that we don't own anything i i just don't believe that could be true so that's where we are the dinosaurs that are, are actually the gatekeepers are in disbelief now maybe they're in disbelief because they already know and they're just plain dumb so a lot of this knowledge uh, will not never be brought to light because it's just like anything. They don't want the, the gen pop to really know what's going on. Misco. Misco, are you, did you move? Are you in, uh, did I see you're in Albuquerque or something? They raise the taxes to a point you can't pay, then put a lien in property and take it for taxes owed instead of value. Yeah, a lot of people say, um. Well, I own my house outright. They'll never take it. I own it. Like, well, you own the real estate. Very few, very few own the land. In fact, I've maybe 0.5% of the population actually own the land, which their real estate, which is they are the beneficiary owner of that security. That's it. Someone else owns it. Um, another way they'll do it is through some of the climate BS that you hear of, or you're going to need to, in, in order to uh, save the climate from CO2, you're going to have to change your, your roof to uh, this green, uh, save the climate, um, whatever they, what do you put on? What do you put on roofs? You nail them. I did it once for a summer. Anyway, um, you're gonna have to do that, and here's the, it's it's okay because you're gonna feel good about it because although although your new roof is gonna cost 160k, no, well, I don't have a hand in 160k. Well, that's a, shingles. There you are, Bruce. My. Uh, well, that's okay. Well, we'll we'll just take your house. Don't worry about it. We'll take it, and you can we'll give you an eight year lease on it. You can rent it for less than you're paying. How does that sound? Cut your deal. 
So you're going to be better off. You're not going to own it. Who cares about it? You're, who wants to own it? You'll, you'll be happy owning nothing. And we'll take it from you and you can pay less. Don't worry about the shingles. Well, are you going to put the shingles on now that you own it? No. Nah, well, we won't talk about that. And that's how that plays out in my delusional head of how all this uh, BS kind of comes together just to take things away from you. And I was, I was having this conversation with an old boomer at the squash club. And he's, you know, they're hook, line, sinkers, CNN head nodders, right? Whatever. They, they turn on the news and, and get this. You're not going to believe this. They turn on the news. They actually believe it. Like everything that's coming from the news, from the anchor people, they believe it as if it's true. And they don't question one thing. They don't question anything. And I don't believe it because I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll ask him, you know, you don't believe all this, do you? You know, you don't believe this. Like, well, why, why wouldn't I believe it? It's like, well, you know, do you ever get the feeling that they kind of lied to you about almost everything you know? No, not at all. So you can't get through to these people, but I, I, I would, I, I would just, you know, I kind of ask these vague questions. Like, do you feel like we're moving Closer towards financial sovereignty and farther away from government control? Like, where do you feel we're moving? And because they're boomers and they bought a house at 60K and it's worth $2 million now, they're like financial sovereignty. I'm like, well, okay. And that's why they're essentially stuck where they are and they're never going to really move because what is that saying? Satisfied needs never motivate. That's where they are. They they did the work, you know, in in the the in <clears throat> the honeypot of humanity's existence. They kind of lived in the best spot to ever live. Just you know, if, if you followed the rules back when they're like, I guess my dad's a boomer. When they followed the rules back then. It all happened for them. You know, you, you just get it, go to university, get a job, work there for 30 years, retire, buy that house. And then by the time you retire, that house will have appreciated in price and uh, you will be okay. And that's what happened for them. Not going to happen for anyone else unless you're extremely wealthy or you come from deep, deep cash, which some people do. Most of the people at the squash club, the younger guys, they come from deep, deep cash. So having the conversations with them is misco. I bring up Operation Mockingbird. I'm called a crazy conspiracy theorist. I always reply, yep, and I'm batting, <laughs> batting 1,000. Do you have the coffee cup, misco? The uh, batting, here's a funny thing. For the for the longest time, because the, the t-shirts and the... And the coffee cups and whatever that I, I sell at the end of the video, it's moved to an American company called Spring. So it's I just don't look at it a lot and they don't send me notifications. I used to get notifications when I was on Shopify. Oh, someone bought a shirt. And then as the bear market came in, I just stopped getting <laughs> notifications. So when I moved to Spring and not getting notifications, I just thought, well, it's still the bear market. Nobody's buying any of these shirts. And then I went into it because I was I'm trying to put this shirt that says uh, what I say. Uh, we're playing the same games as our psychopathic elected elites. That's the long game. Just make like a, a lyric shirt of it. <clears throat> and I realized people have bought some shirts and some uh, and some and some cups. And the crazy part is, is that what and this goes goes to show a lot of what I know about what people want. The shirts that I thought people would like, say like the Bitcoin crypto morning TA or the give or take a hundred million. I thought, well, those will be the, the big sellers. And then I reluctantly put the conspiracy theorist batting 1000 and the, uh, that which once wicked. I just kind of, oh, we'll put these up too. But it turns out that the people that bought the shirts and the coffee cups are buying the, that which once wicked. A conspiracy theorist batting 1,000 and the 
that which that which one and the uh, dirty Gary Gensler shirt. So I put those up as a uh, you know just because I had them, I did the work on the on the. Ah, I might as well throw them up as a T-shirt, and those are the ones that people are buying. So thank you if you bought those. Much appreciated. It's really basically the uh, the one a channel like this. This is how it you know t- keeps the lights on, so to speak. Uh, with the with buying the t-shirts uh because <clears throat> what was that we own the land but at the mercy of the con- county and city governments yeah well up in canada it's all crown land basically all crown land there is some native land but it's still crown land i mean it's you know crown native and then they 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 lease it so that i have some friends who have some cabins out in lake of the woods it's called and uh, they are on a 99 year lease from the native reserves. And the more, the craziest part of that is that to get to their cabins, you have to take these winding roads through a native reserve. And I don't know what native reserves are like in the States, but in Manitoba, and this is no joke and it's sad really, most of the native reserves in Manitoba are like third world countries. So you think you're driving through an abandoned town, really. You, like you see houses with no doors, burned out cars. And then the clears and you're in cabin, cabin country and the cabins are like million dollar cabins. So you go from a third world country with burned out cars and no front doors to million dollar cabins. It's so bizarre. Where is that money going? Because all these people with million dollar cabins are paying this lease to the Native Reserve. I don't know. It might be a topic for uh, someone else to to deep dive into. There it is, the four hour chart, the noisy little so and so. As you can see, you know, at the end of the day, this is why we have such limited retail coming in right now. Now, mind you. All of this, can you see this? Oh, no. All of this is just a range, a boring range. The top of the range, mind you. The top of the range. Hey, buddy. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. Oh, there you go. You're almost getting too big to sit on your old man's lap, aren't you? Going into grade four. Going to be a big kid next year, nine years old. Yeah, you're almost nine in June. Happy birthday in June. What is that? Two months from now? You're going to be nine years old. I don't believe it. You're still four, aren't you? No. All right. Well, uh, let's, can you put on the sweet reverb there, buddy? There you go. Oh, the sweet reverb. All right. Let's do some shout outs, buddy. Oh, let me turn the, let's turn the, Miss Go. Miss Go. Jimmy Coco. Jimmy Coco. Dave Digital the Goat. Dave Digital the Goat. Timothy Lumen. Timothy Lumen. Curtis Nail. Curtis Nail. Sultan of Salt. Sultan of Salt. Bruce My My. Bruce My. Terry Crow. Terry Crow. Mark Dutch Dutch Dutch. Mark Dutch. Holly Smoke and Scotty Moe. And Johnny December down in Belay. Johnny December. Jerry C. Jerry C. Swash Buckland Scallyway. Swash Buckland Scallyway. And holy smoke, it's Wick. Wick. So early. So early. Nice job, buddy. All right, you bearish or bullish today? We a little bullish. bit of a pullback. You bullback? Bullish. Yeah, well, bullish. Kind of, you always got to be bullish. Well, it's a, we're playing the long game, right? Why does he have a diamond? Uh, because that's an OG. That's one of the one of the oldest subs, uh, membership subscribers in the channel, and they get an OG means diamond hands. You know, you know what it means. They've been here for the longest, building the channel. Thank you very much, Christopher. Um, well, let's uh, let's sing them out, my boy. We're playing the same game. Zoom up and have a fantastic 
day. I run the bank of boom and spring. Bitcoin, crypto, money, and TA. Nice singing, buddy. Like a pitch, like a sniper. Well, what a day. Are we just going to, are we going to sit here and do nothing all day? Is that what we're going to do? Market opens in five minutes. Maybe, uh, actually, I always say this, the uh, the little dipsy doodle before market opening, I usually like. It's like the nice little fake out. However, yesterday, what was the inflows negative for the uh, ETFs? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, without retail coming in, we're at the mercy of these uh, massive ETF hedge funds, these, these Bitcoin prisons to pump the price. Healthy? I don't know. I don't know how healthy it is overall, but it will pump our bag. So at the end of the day, what can you say? We're the, we're the lucky ones. We got in before the ETFs, before the hedge funds, before the institutions, and before the final boss of bosses, nation states. Make sure you like and subscribe and share the